Do you ever feel like sometimes you get to the end of your production process or your mixing process and everything still feels a little bit flat and dull and one dimensional? Your song doesn't really have that punch and that character and that sparkle that you're looking for in a commercially ready mix? Well, today we're gonna fix some of those issues with Mixbus Processing. I wanna talk to you about what Mixbus Processing is, things that you should be looking out for when you're adding things to your Mixbus, and I wanna show you an example where we can look at a song that's mixed with and without the Mixbus, of course all level matched and game matched, so you can really see what a difference it makes in terms of the overall structure of the mix. So we're gonna jump into Cubase and look at all of that in one second. But before we do, my name is Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music where we have weekly tutorials. If you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because it helps us out a ton. We have videos come out every single Friday. So definitely make sure you stick around for those. Other than that, at the end of the video, if you wanna support our channel or grab anything for yourself, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com, where we have all sorts of freebies and paid content. We have sample packs, preset packs, courses, blog posts, we have a podcast. So head over to our website, Make Pop Music, after this video and show us some love and pick something up for yourself. But other than that, we're going to hop into Cubase so I can actually explain Mixbus processing and show you something in the actual mix. Let's check it out. Let's actually talk a little bit about what Mixbus processing is. So Mixbus processing, also called two bus processing, sometimes also called master bus processing, is basically all of the processing that's going to happen on the track that everything in your mix comes down to eventually. So I have one in my session called Master Bus Automation. And typically when I produce, I'm also mixing. And typically if I'm producing and mixing, I'm also mastering. So this video can kind of duplicate itself as my mastering chain. However, if I am sending this out to mastering, everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video stays exactly the same, minus the final limiter that I'll show you in this tutorial. But other than that, just know that Mixbus processing is gonna be processing applied to the entire mix as a whole. You could do it in your production or your mixing session. You could also bounce your song out without any of these effects, and then you could do that in a separate session to that actual pre-master track. So that's what Mixbus processing is. Some of the reasons that you might wanna use some Mixbus processing are just to kind of add either your signature sound to that mix or to add things like glue, excitement, polish, and sometimes refinement. If you feel like there are areas of the mix that could be improved before it hits mastering or before it hits limiting and getting as loud as it needs to be for a commercial release. A lot of the time, your mix is gonna be in a pretty, pretty solid place, and that mix bus is really just gonna give it that last little bit of sheen. Sometimes your mix is kind of far off the deep end, and if you're working under a time crunch, or you just feel like you could get it done in your mix bus, you can also do that. The song that we're gonna be looking at today was actually mixed into a mix bus for a lot of the process, so you're gonna hear how drastically it changes when we have that mix bus on versus off, because I was making mixed decisions into this entire two bus or mix bus. And that's a totally valid workflow if it works for you. Some people like doing it at the beginning, some people like doing it at the end. I like turning on some of my mix bus processing when my mix gets to like 70%, so then I can start to kind of picture what the final outcome is gonna look like, because to me, it doesn't really matter what it sounds like without any of that processing. What really matters is just whatever the listener is gonna be uh, kind of hearing at the end of the process. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this mix sounds like with nothing on it. I am gonna be using uh, Perception AB from Meter Plugs. This is just going to gain match everything. I tried to level match everything as good as I possibly could by ear, uh, but this is gonna make sure that we are not getting any massive gain jumps so anything sounds a lot more pleasing. We should be pretty level matched. Let's take a listen to uh, no mix bus processing at all on this song. That's your me now. So it sounds pretty fine. We're coming okay. It's pretty loud for a pre-master, but we're not clipping. That's totally fine. For gain staging in general, as long as I'm not pushing into anything too hard on my master bus, or as long as I'm not clipping coming out of my master bus, I don't really care about gain staging that much. Let's go ahead and turn on the meter AB. And the first thing I like to do on my mix bus is some kind of processing for glue. And a lot of that time, that's just compression. So in this example, I'm using the Slate FG Red. It's just a red style bus compressor. I really, really like this. Typically, I'll have the attack set pretty fast. Sometimes if I really, really want to squeeze this mix bus uh, compression, I'll turn the attack faster. For this song, I want some of those transients in that drum to come out. And I'm really just kind of using this for glue. So we have a medium fast attack, a kind of medium slow release. Ratio is only at 1.5. I've seen people go all the way up to like 4.1 on their ratio for their mix bus compression. I typically will leave it under two because if I'm doing more than that, it's just for a specific sound. So 
you'll see we've got the threshold dialed in to where we're getting anywhere between one and three dB of gain reduction, a hair of drive just for some of that like saturation, not really doing any high pass filter, not really doing any makeup gain. So this is what it sounds like with and without it. You can hear that when I engage it, it just kind of tucks those kick drums in. It kind of brings a sense out a little bit more, adds a little bit of that drive and saturation. And to me, that kind of opens up the mix and makes it feel a little bit more cohesive. A lot of the time when I'm doing my first compression on my mix bus, I really am looking for that glue that you hear everybody talk about. And that typically happens with like medium fast attack, kind of medium release, not a super high ratio and not a ton of gain reduction. You just need to be kind of kissing it on your mix bus. The next thing that I wanna talk about is saturation on the mix bus. A lot of the time people are looking for excitement. Uh, for myself in particular, I'm really looking to just kind of saturate some of the lows and saturate some of the top end. That way you have that really nice, big, punchy, tight low end and you have that really nice, airy, sizzly top end, but you're not really getting those crunchy mids. So here are the settings that I use. It's just a magic preset on Saturn 2 that I've kind of tweaked to my own mix. This is not the same for every mix. Sometimes I'll dial some of these drive uh, parameters and some of these tone parameters a little bit differently, but this is what I have for this mix and here's what it sounds like without it. Here's what it sounds like with it. You can hear that with that saturation on that top end, especially, it's really getting that vocal uh, chop and those synths to kind of separate out from that really mid-heavy bass and kind of drum production that we have going on. A lot of the time I find that excitement to be really essential for things like really polished pop tracks, but let's say I'm doing something like an indie track that needs to be a little bit darker and warmer and have a little bit different quality. Sometimes I still want saturation because that can kind of glue the whole mix together, but maybe for that I'll use something like a tape machine. So a lot of the time on the channel you've seen me use like Slate's virtual tape machines. I used it on our Harry Styles video. I've used it on an indie pop video. Something like that is going to saturate those lows and those low mids and it's going to kind of roll off the top. So this is really a big kind of tone shaping characteristic, adding saturation to your mix. So just make sure that you're adding saturation that's going to kind of fit the aesthetic quality of your mix. For this, I wanted something kind of scooped and bright and punchy. So Saturn 2 came in clutch, but if I wanted something more warm and analog and traditional, I could have used something like a tape machine or ozone tape, something like that, just to kind of like roll off those highs and smooth out those mids. The next thing that I do, sometimes this is not like an always thing for me, is add something like Gullfoss. That's kind of just like a smart EQ that's adding some EQ curves. And I just find that this kind of like tightens everything up a little bit more, just kind of gives you that quote unquote, like radio ready sound. Here's what it sounds like while it's bypassed. And here's what it sounds like when we have that on. And I've got it both at like 16%. I'm not doing anything wildly crazy. I brought the gain down one dB just to kind of gain match everything. It's actually a little bit quieter than without it, but I still prefer it. You can see what we're kind of doing here. It's kind of just like making sure that we have those subs. It's kind of smoothing out that harsh top end between like two and 8K. And then it's just adding some brightness at like 10, 20. That's your me now. And you can hear that some of those kind of flubby low mids and mids that we had in that pre-master are really starting to shape up and you're starting to get that separation between the synths and the bass and the vocals. And that's just happening from that compression and some of those saturation and EQ moves. Uh, the next thing that I like to add is this is something I've been doing for years. If you watch our channel, you've seen me use this a ton. And that's just a linear phase multiband compressor from Waves. I use it on the Electro Mastering preset. And for this one, I've turned it down just to gain match a little bit. I literally don't touch anything on this. This to me just kind of adds a little bit more of that glue, especially as we've added things like saturation. This will kind of make sure that we're not getting any crazy spikes in like the low mids or the high mids or the air. And to me, this just kind of adds like a nice finishing touch because you're getting a little bit of that glue from that compression, but you're also getting some of that polish from it actually taming certain frequency ranges and making the mix as a whole feel a little bit more balanced. 
And you can hear when I engage this linear phase multiband, it is really bringing that kick out. Now that kick feels punchy, it feels snappy, and that's probably happening because of this compression on these low mids right here, where a lot of the time if your bass feels kind of out of control or if your kick feels just kind of messy or if your synths feel a little bit tubby and bloated, it's gonna be in this region and you're like 200, 400, 500 region. And this is just doing a little bit of compression. That's really the only thing moving. I'll leave it engaged one more time so you can kind of see the slight little dips that it's giving, but how much of a difference that makes in the full mix. The other thing that I've been doing kind of recently, and this is something that I've literally just started doing, is adding a little bit of mix bus EQ to my mix bus or my master, and I didn't used to do it because typically I throw on my mix bus so early in my process that a lot of my EQ moves are kind of done specifically with the mix bus in mind. However, I found this, this certain plugin to just kind of be magic. I started doing it like maybe a month or two ago and it's just really worked for me. It's just doing some kind of mid side EQ and it adds a little bit of stereo separation. It adds a little bit of polish and it adds a little bit of that just kind of like glue in the sense of frequencies but not in the sense of dynamics so i'll let you hear with and without this eq here is the settings it's just their master mix preset basically not touched and then i'm just pulling it down a couple db for gain matching but take a listen without That's your me now. and then let's hear with That's your me now. To me, this EQ is kind of giving us back some of those low mids that might have gotten a little bit stepped on when we started doing some of that saturation and some of that compression because low mids typically either are the first thing to get really out of control when you add those or they're the first thing to really get diminished. So I found that this is just kind of boosting that low end and those low mids and that top end. And it's again, just giving us that really nice kind of modern almost scoop sound that you hear in like electronic pop. So that's what we're doing for that. The last thing that I'll show you, this is what I was talking about if I am or I'm not mastering it. If I was mastering it, which I did for this actual release, what I do is I'll put Pro L2 just literally last in my chain. Um, here are the settings that I use for this song. I'm just giving it a little bit of gain so we can get some gain reduction. No look ahead really, attack at like 64, release at 10. So super fast, snappy release, um, output at negative 0.1. That tends to work okay for me. It's just gonna be adding a little bit of that um, compression and limiting. And then other than that, that is pretty much my entire chain. So if you are using something like Metric AB, what you can do is, I'm gonna reanalyze this now, so I'll let this play through. That's your me now. And then you literally just have to punch in match level. So now what we can look at is we can look at everything with and without. So. Here is our mix with no mix bus processing whatsoever. That's your me now. You can literally hear how much more 3D and dynamic and polished this entire mix sounds just from some of this mix bus processing stuff. Again, I wouldn't normally have like the meter AB in there. So it really just is some compression, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of finessing with Gullfoss, a little bit of glue and compression with linear MV, a little bit of just kind of like tone reshaping with this, uh, Elijah or Alicia Muse EQ, and then just adding my final limiter. Even without that limiter, let's go ahead and let's hear. I'll just need to reevaluate this metric AB. That's your me now. Now this time, that's your so here it is, even without that limiter. That's your me now.
The mix bus really just makes this whole mix a bit sweeter, a little bit easier to listen to. It's gonna translate a little bit better because again, those mids that can kind of get out of control when you're mixing, are really hard to handle because if you scoop too much of them out, the mix sounds really, really hollow. And if they're way too bloated, the mix just sounds really flat and one dimensional. And especially on things like car speakers or headphones, it'll just sound a little bit muddy and a little bit kind of like unexciting. And so adding some of these things where you kind of have that general balance in your mix, but you're really just finessing them. I find that really, really does help you just get something super, super balanced where you can kind of do everything you need to in that mixing or that production, and then just add that last little 10% with that mix bus. So hopefully this video helped. Again, mix bus processing could easily make or break your mix. These are just some of the things I like to do, but if you find that your mix is lacking glue or punch or excitement or polish or like refinement, definitely try that mix bus before you go doing a million different things in your mix, because this is something that's really easy to revise literally anytime during that process. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us out a ton. Let us know what you want to see in the comments down below because we're always taking from your suggestions and ideas as content that we could be doing on the channel. And then other than that, if you did like this video, make sure you head over to makepopmusic.com where you can check out all of our stuff over there. We do have a lot of free content. We have sample packs. We have like ebooks, all kinds of really, really cool stuff that you can go check out. And then we also have paid content like crazy sample packs, preset packs for serum. We have some choruses. We have a podcast that you can listen to. So head over to makepopmusic.com where you can check all of that out. Show us some love and support the channel. Other than that, we'll be back next week with more content. But until then, much love. Peace.